Welcome back to Broken Bobby's Transformation page. In the late 80s, I became involved with drugs and would eventually become part of that lifestyle of trafficking, addiction, and violence. Over the next 20 years, I would be in and out of jail and prison. If you're thinking about trying something or you're dealing with addiction, your life don't need to go down the same path mine did. I hurt a lot of people, both physically and emotionally. These are my stories of how I transformed my life, and you can too. Let's Welcome back to the channel. As you can see by the thumbnail and the title, this is when the Sureños get active. Uh, first and foremost, I want to wish everybody a happy Independence Day, 4th of July. Uh, I hope everybody celebrates responsib responsibly, if I could get the words out. And if uh, you are going to be drinking adult beverages, don't drive. Make sure you have somebody that can handle that responsibility sober. Okay, so let's get into this. <clears throat> In uh, doing time, I've seen a lot of activity from the Serenos, if you will, or the Southsiders, as we call them in Southern California. Uh, now, I was in L.A. County and being processed in. And if you've ever been into L.A. County and been pro obviously you were processed in, uh, you jump from holding cell to holding cell until they finally get you housed. Well, there was this Southsider. I'm going to call him a Southsider for this story because uh, uh, he had Sureño blasted across his chest. And as I understand it, that's more of a title than Southsider. Now, I, I didn't run with the Southsiders, uh, so, you know, if I'm <clears throat> wrong on that one, definitely drop a comment and uh, let's correct the record. But, so as you're being processed in, you get put in these small holding cells on this long hallway and, uh, you know, you go through the different steps. And a lot of times, like, it's a long process. Like, you, typically it's 12 hours or more before you actually get housed upstairs in Men's Central or wherever they end up sending you. And a lot of times guys will just lay down on the concrete and try to get some sleep because a lot of people have been going and, and using drugs and stuff. And so, you know, you're not going anywhere in a hurry. So you'll lay down, find a piece of real estate on the floor and take a nap, basically. <clears throat> And this guy right away peels off his, his shirt and, uh, you know, he's talking a big game about how he's been to the shoe program. And, uh, you know, at that time in my uh, criminal career, I guess you would say, uh, I was still pretty green and I wasn't even sure of what the shoe program was. But, you know, I, I would go on to find out shoe program is secure housing unit if you don't know uh there's only a few of them or at least there were only a few of them when i was doing time i believe it was corcoran tehachapi and pelican bay and basically you had to put in some pretty decent work or you know for the most part most of those guys that end up back there have put in some decent work or they're affiliated with one of the big four groups um you know, you could also catch a shoe term for having a weapon, uh, you know, possessing drugs in an institution. I, you know, I would come to find out there's a lot of things you could get sent to the shoe program for. But this guy, and, and I don't remember where he was from. Uh, he was a bigger South Sider, probably 6'1", 6 6 2, 200 pounds or so. Looked like he had done a lot of time. And he was talking a good game. You know, I was in the shoe program and, uh, you know, I was communicating with the big homies and this and that and the other. And a lot of the Southsiders were looking at this guy like, wow, this guy is somebody. Well, somewhere along the process, there was an incident between the Southsiders and the Blacks. And like I said, if you've 
been processed in, you know what these holding cells look like. They're not very big at all. Uh, you know, maybe 15, 20 feet deep, I would say, by 10 or 12 feet wide, maybe, with, like, concrete benches on the side. And then there's a little wall, and there's a toilet in the back. And, <clears throat> you know, it... Uh, as I remember it, it was pretty even numbers between the two groups, but something had occurred and a melee would ensue. You know, it's like maybe a four on four or five on five. There were a couple of bices in there as well. And I think I was the only white guy. So as the tone changed in there, I made my way around that little wall to get out of the way because I know how these things go down and once the fists start flying it can get real ugly in there and you know whether they mean to hit you or not if you're in the way you're gonna get cracked so <clears throat> I moved myself out of the way and it kicked off and the guy that was talking the big game somehow found himself behind that wall too and didn't participate now this is none of my business so you know, I, I didn't go on to say anything about it, but, you know, once they got everything settled down, they did a South Sider cell and a Black cell, and I stayed in with the South Siders. All of a sudden, there's some conversations going on amongst people, and they got on this dude. Like, that is, uh, you know, considered an act of cowardice, basically, not jumping when it's time to. And, uh, you know, with all due respect, you know, usually every Southsider is going to jump. So it just seemed weird to me, and obviously it seemed weird to them as well because they ended up uh, savagely beating this dude. Uh, he, <clears throat> you know, I actually felt bad for the dude, but... You know, it's not my car, it's not my politics, so my opinion didn't matter, and I would go on to learn that if that had that been a wood, we would have done the same thing to him as well. So, uh, you know, I don't know whatever happened to that guy, but, yeah, he got rolled up out of there with a bunch of knots on him and uh, leaking like a bloody mess, basically. So, uh that's one story. If, if, now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, smash that like button, drop a comment, hit that notification bell. So anytime I go live or drop a new video, you will be notified. And also, you can hit that join button and become a member. Uh, members get exclusive content. And uh, we'll, once we get uh, some members going, we'll probably do a giveaway for some merch. I'm working on that as well. So... Now let's fast forward. I'm in reception, North Kern State Prison, Delano, old Delano, I guess you would say. <clears throat> and it's, uh, you know, this guy comes in, he's a Southsider. And, you know, I'm kicking it with my homeboys. And like, like I said, I messed with some of those Southsiders that were from the IE pretty tough. We'd work out together and stuff. And uh, so, you know, sometimes I would hear some stuff that maybe I wasn't supposed to hear. But, uh, you know, I, I was cool with a couple of them. And uh, we were getting ready to work out one evening. And th this guy rolls up. And one thing I'll say about prison is if you do something that you're not supposed to do that doesn't go with the protocols of your people word travels almost as quick as you do so <clears throat> i i don't know if somebody came to the door and talked to somebody or if a kite landed or what happened but uh word was passed that basically somebody had called this guy at a name and uh you know they you know i don't know if they called him a punk or what they called him I, I don't know. I wasn't privy to that information. But basically somebody called him out of his name and he didn't do anything about it. Now, in prison, if, you know, somebody calls you a punk, a bitch, a lame, or uh, anything else you consider 
coming at you sideways, you take off on them. It's not open for discussion. Uh, it's, you know, in, on the levels I've been on. Now, I, I don't know, like on these level 4 180s, I don't know. I have no experience with that, so I'm not going to uh, try to speak on that. But, yeah, so basically the word had come that somebody called him out of his name. He didn't do nothing about it, so they basically rolled him up, uh, you know, gave him the 13-second treatment in the rear restroom, boom, 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 touched this guy up real good and rolled him up, said, you can't program here anymore. Well, when something like this happens, typically, as I understand it, they're going to ask you as the inmate, do you need protection or, you know, do you want to just be moved to another yard? Uh, protection being they'll send you over to the SNY side and then uh, basically your criminal career is over. You're now considered a de degenerate. You're no good and uh, a lot of people view it as you couldn't make it on the main line. So people don't typically want to do that. Um, you know, some people at some point they get tired of everything and, and they roll it up and that's where they want to go. And I think a lot of people regret that decision, but uh, I'm sorry, I got away from the topic at hand here. <laughs> so, word came, he got rolled up off another yard, he landed here, and they uh, basically called for the removal. And this one was ugly. Uh, I was, it was upstairs, like I said, Old Delano, North Kern, and uh, dorm setting. I'm on my bunk, and funny thing is, a lot of times when somebody's gonna get moved on, everybody knows but the person that's gonna get moved on. And, you know, it'll get kinda quiet in there, and ev everybody's paying attention, but at the same time, you don't wanna be paying too much attention to the potential target, because you don't wanna dry snitch and tip them off. Cause it's none of your business you know so dudes had come up the steps and was walking towards my bunk and the there was one shooter and another a, a bomber i guess you would say so dude comes up from behind him and just starts plugging him boom 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 and you know, I'd say he probably hit him maybe 10 times or so. And then he took off. I don't know what he did with the weapon. And then the second guy got on him and just started hands and feet on him. And uh, as I understand it, this technique is used because if there isn't a weapon, then, uh, you know, they I think they can't get you for like a attempted murder type of thing it's just a gbi great bodily injury type of thing battery on an inmate i mean either way you're gonna end up in the shoe for that uh, especially if they're leaking all over the place but uh yeah like they got on this dude and like it was a nasty scene right there but you know the thing is this is life in prison you know uh <clears throat> you whether you agree with it or not, you are going to get with the program. And if you don't get with the program and, you know, handle your business and command your respect, then somebody's probably going to come and stick a piece of metal in you. Excuse me. So, uh, that is the, you know, a couple of instances where the Southsiders got active. And, uh, these guys can be brutal, you know? And it's not to say that other factions or races don't take it to the same level, because we all do. You know, the thing is, if you're in prison, you know, a lot of times when you get tapped on the shoulder to do something, like you want to do it to the fullest extreme that you possibly can, because basically you are offering your business card amongst criminals <laughs> and what I mean by that is everybody's watching 
like I said, a lot of times the victim's the last one to know. Everybody knows something's going to go down. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of times the the guys that are in charge will let the other races know, hey, avoid like that rear restroom area or uh, avoid the bars, whatever it may be, uh, because we're going to be taking care of some business. And then that word gets filtered out amongst the other races. They don't necessarily know what's going to happen, but they know something's going to happen and where it's going to happen. So people pay attention to that area and, uh, you know, stuff happens like that, like I said. So uh, the best advice I could offer is... Uh, don't go to prison and you won't have to deal with these sort of situations. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to the Sureño homies. Like I said, they're with the business. No doubt about it. So uh, um, I hope everybody's having a great 4th of July. Uh, enjoy the family and everything. And, uh, you know, if you're new to sobriety, welcome. You can do this. Uh, you know, I was an addict for a long time and honestly it almost seemed like I had to finally go to prison to give it up because I felt like I was predestined to land on a prison yard uh, as sick and twisted as that sounds I really believed that and once I did and I seen all the carnage and the craziness of the world of prison I was pretty much done uh, so family, fitness, and freedom are the things that help me to get my life together and they can help you as well. If you're new to sobriety, welcome. You can do this. I believe in you. If I could do it, anybody can do it. Remember, play the tape all the way through. If you're, you know, considering making a bad decision, just think about what the possible consequences can be and, you know, how it may affect your life. And if it's not favorable to you know what where you want to be heading then maybe you should make a different decision so uh if you're new to the channel subscribe smash that like button drop a comment hit the notification bell so that anytime i drop a new video or go live you will be notified uh also you can become a member hit that join button and pick one of the different options and there's going to be some exclusive stuff for the members so uh, be on the lookout for that. Also, I'll probably be going live later on tonight. Uh, like I said, it's the 4th of July. We're going to have some fun with the family. And uh, don't look at the mountain. Just start climbing. <clears throat>